Hello. Hello, Instagram. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Sally. Hi. Welcome back to another installment of Creativity for Wellness. And today we're going to speak to Sasha of Frankenfeel. I'm really excited. Really, really excited. Oh, <laughs> welcome, Sally. Me too. I'm really, really excited. Um, so, Sasha is joining us now, so let's bring her in. Um, oh, lovely to see you. Welcome. Welcome. This is... I can't remember what episode now, but we're into the teens of... Um, Creativity for Wellness Lives, and uh, I have been following Sasha for a while. Um, Laura, welcome. Sharon, welcome. Um, Sasha, I'm trying to invite you in, but I can't, so would you like to request to join? See if we can bring you in that way. There we go. Laura, hi Laura. Laura two, Laura number two. <laughs> Here we go. And Sasha now of Frank and Feel to talk about creativity for wellness. Um, oh, we did it. Hello. Yay. Good Te morning. Number one, yeah. win against technology. Win. <laughs> okay. Um, and everybody else, can you hear us? That's, that's going to be number two. So yeah. give us a yes if you can hear us out there. Um, lovely. Welcome, Peckham WI. Welcome. Thank you. Can you hear us? Give us a wave. Sally says yes. Sally's excited to be here. She oh, is excited. very much cool. looking forward to this, as am I. Great. We've got sound. I'm delighted. Okay, I can switch off the official hat and now I can look at you and say hello. Yay! Nice. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the three out of three is going to be, I've got a delivery coming that I wasn't expecting today. Yes. I have everything crossed that it doesn't turn up <laughs> in the next half an hour. So if we manage to do that, we'll be away, won't we? And you know what? <laughs> if you have to go and get the delivery, we will do deal with it it will be okay <laughs> hey jade welcome lovely nice to see you here and looking forward to speaking to you in a few weeks too oh my goodness sasha so welcome sasha to my creativity for wellness lives um these have been a wonderful series and um exploring and chatting with people just is like the easiest thing in the world i really love it and i've been following you and listening reading and feeling feeling your musings and um and and it's about good so let me tell the world a little bit about you so you class yourself as a writer a doubter and a doer even though you've been writing in some form from the age of eight you only started calling yourself a writer last year a rebellious act against your self-doubting nature you're an average avid journaler lover of words you want to use them to challenge the negative narratives that women can have about themselves. You do this through what you call remind hers. I love that. I'm <laughs> subscribed. I'm all over it. Little notes of thought jotted around the internet to remind women of what has always been there, our internal North Star. It's like someone sh somewhat shrouded by responsibilities, shoulds, ingrained narratives and self-doubt. You write about your own journey as it unfolds, unlearning self-doubt and turning back into self-trust in the hope that doing so through your creative outlet provides a small, powerful reminders to those that come across your words. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't. What does that sound like? How does that feel hearing that back? It's the first time I've heard anyone actually, <laughs> and it's funny, I'm such, I know of myself, I'm 
like I'm quite last minute. I, I work in like creative bits and start. So when I knew this was coming up, I've had like the email to say, oh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like I've had it starred for about three and a half weeks. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll come back to that. Mm-mm, I'll come back to that. What will I say? And then I just typed something out. and was like, okay, go. <laughs> so it's the first time I'm hearing it back. But yeah, it sounds nice. Yeah. That sounds like what I'm trying to do here. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you told me you... um did you say that it, you, you woke up in the morning and did it? Did it come to you in the morning? I just have to kind of grab it just comes. whenever they come, to be honest. Yeah. I just um, find, I find that my inner critic has, often hasn't, doesn't wake up as early as me, and that's handy because then I can just like let it come out before anyone's going, whoa, hang on, and who, who are you to say that? No, 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 no. You know, of all yep. the voices that we've ever heard in our, in our whole life ever, like um, all coming out in this voice here inside my head. So uh, that, you know, that's, that's a little thing about creativity for me that helps is getting rid of that inner critic, that self-doubter, which mm. you touch on a lot in what you say and do, which I love because, as Brene Brown says, Auntie Brene, <laughs> um, shame can't hide when we shine a light on it. So mm. the more we say hello, inner critic, the more we say hello, self-doubt, uh, it's got no place to hide anymore. That's my take on it. What What about you? What does it mean for you? I think mine would be exactly the same. I find that in small ways through writing, the more I'm, and it's not necessarily about being completely stripped bare with your vulnerability, but the more you just make small little nudges and, you know, just open up about things, you that's where you find your voice I always remember that Nicola Ray Wickham of A Life More Inspired she always says you find your voice by using it yes. and I was like at, when I first I worked with her last year when I first worked with her I was like no no I think I find my, my voice by like endlessly planning and researching and writing everything down and being 99% ready and then maybe maybe I will find a whisper <laughs> but actually she's right you find your voice by using it and that's definitely what I've learned in the last year or so. And it's in quietly, you know, navigating the sea of, of self-doubt and kind of opening up about that, that I'm realising my voice is quite powerful and I've got quite a lot to say. And there's le- there's fewer places for self-doubt to kind of like hide and pop up and go, hi, what do you think you're doing? Do you think you can do that? Because in it, in it. <laughs> yeah I hear it's like the voice takes takes up that space um I hear I hear the perfectionism well I am here seeing my perfectionism in my relation to your story there <laughs> and um I wonder if that's there for you first a a a, a, a shout out to Nicola Ray Wickham who's been on here and turned out talking to a podcast because it was so good and um high praise for this woman as you were talking there's lots of love I'm guessing people out there who are listening self-doubt is you're hearing that you're feeling that Laura says she's loving this yeah that um we can't yeah I really want to get polished things out there all the time you know I really want to know that it's right and uh the the more polished i get it the further i get away from my heart sometimes yeah Um, and the further you get from actually doing it or starting it or putting it out because we've got this thing often about oh i'm not good enough but then we don't give ourselves the opportunity to be good enough but then even in that the metric there's there's no metric of good enough so you could never get there anyway so you just go round and round in circles beating yourself up about something that you're not doing anyway. <laughs> yeah, and so as you're talking, I'm I'm hearing self forgiveness, your and mm. your modelling imperfection, better done than perfect, which gives um, permission to everybody else who is in your space. Because, okay, let's look at Instagram. It's on our screen. It's it's um 
it's on your phone or it's on your screen, but it's mostly on your phone. It's the same squares, but when I come across your squares, mm. I feel like I'm stepping into a room. And I feel like I'm stepping into a room that is quiet and it's still. And it has all the room for taking your coat off, to put it away somewhere else, letting go of what else is there, and then stepping in and simply holding the smallest little thing that you can find and then looking at it with no other calling to you from other places or anywhere else, but simply that moment. That I didn't know that I, that just came out of my mouth now, but that's what it feels coming across your feed. It's nice because people will say to me quite often that they feel really calm and like they can like take a few seconds when they come across stuff in my feed. And I like that because I'm quite, I'm a big fan of slower, more intentional living because we live at a fast pace. We, we are, we hold ourselves to standards of kind of ridiculous expectations of things we think we should be doing and how much we think we should be doing and how quickly we think we should be doing this. And we're always multitasking and there's always something to scroll. And even the action of a scroll is like, <laughs> right. and the scroll is like this. And I like creating small mindful moments where you do just like stop, even just for a few seconds to, let yourself catch up and be like, oh, hang on, before I just go past that, wait, what was that thought and what do I think about that and how do I relate to that? That's, I, that's what I like doing and that's what I like finding. That's the kind of social media that I like. It makes me feel at home. Mm, what a beautiful phrase and a beautiful feeling that comes with that. I think we have, if we've allowed ourselves to, had a lot of opportunity over the last few months to find our home in different ways, literally, mm -hmm. figuratively, um, how we want to be. And it's beautiful. Jade says perfections and imperfections. Yes, absolutely. And Grizzles Gold is just clapping, high-fiving, hooray over all of that. Um, Nunhead Farmer agrees. Finding moments of mindfulness. Uh, yeah, it can be scary, though. Why don't we do it more? Maybe we're scared of what we think we'll find um, when we go there. Um, I think if we look at the time that we're in now, a lot of us have been forced through the slowing down to maybe go to the places that we haven't necessarily wanted to go to. Generally, it can be a hard thing, but generally I think it's a good thing. Um, yeah, if you've got like the right structures in place and maybe you can access the right support to do that if it's not something that you can work through on your own. Um, but yeah, I think we're scared of stopping because we're scared of, of thinking about, why am I doing this? Like, why have I been doing this for so long? What's, what's the point? We kind of get caught up in, oh, well, everybody else is doing it, so this must be the right way. And then we just carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on. And then, oh, it's the weekend. I can finally breathe for five seconds, and then it's Monday, and we go again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So true. So true. And so how do you um, find that for yourself if it's not your Instagram feed that you're planning for or creating for? Mm. How else in your life does that – do you make that happen? Um, I – Seek to be inspired. Um, I think I've read a phrase somewhere before that says something like, to be interesting, you have to be interested. Mm. So I'm not very good. I'm, not, I'm a very slow reader. But I've taken up this challenge this year of um, doing uh, Gretchen Rubin's 21 in 21, which is to read 21 minutes a day. Um, and I'm finding that a really accessible way of getting me into the habit of reading. That's and I'm reading tip. some really interesting books. And it's, some, it's what I do first thing in the morning as well, before I get too distracted. Yeah. Um, and when my brain switches on, because I'm a morning person. So, yeah, I seek inspiration through, like, the books I'm reading. Or sometimes... I make space for not learning anything. <laughs> because oh, yes. as much as I love kind of like self-development and knowing more of myself, too much of anything is not good. 
So I sometimes I just make active space for just like no learning, no doing, no improving, no bettering, just existing. And doing things that don't necessarily have a result because not everything has to have a result to have value. So I might do um, art journaling, which is just like cutting out scraps of magazines and like just spending a couple of hours doing something like that. Um, it might be um, journaling, hand pen to paper, uh, a phone conversation, um, reading something like of no merit. Oh my gosh, my personal one at the moment is watching Married at First Sight Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And sometimes I find that when you just make space without expectation, a lot more comes. It makes space for stuff to come rather than if you're sat there saying, right, I've got this container of time. I need to write and do this. And this is, this is your time creativity come upon me. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, creativity is in every moment and we just have to grab it and if we're still enough. I remember one of my meditations, very early meditations, when I felt like I wasn't doing it right, you know, still feel like I'm not doing it right, but I'm okay with that now. That's the only difference. <laughs> um, and, and I had this, like, imagination, imagining of me being in this pool of water, like a lake, and thrashing about, like, working so hard to swim to solve the problems to fix things to make it all good but because I'm thrashing so hard I mm -hmm. cannot see what the actual problem is it's like which are the waves that I am making and which are the ones that I actually need to deal with you're um, actively doing nothing because you're like putting in all the effort <laughs> what am I getting out of it <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely welcome everybody um sophia hi lovely welcome to see you lovely to see you here it's sarah um hey sadie um yes and it and that stillness um upon my crown says so well said making space feels so linked to forgiveness and even just allowing yourself to be without producing that permission is huge i run creative conversations which is a space to come and just be and create mm. if you want to mostly it's about being and connecting and that is the most often spoken about exchange that we have is allowing ourselves to create without an outcome not for productivity mm. and it, that it feels a little bit uncomfortable you know we get a bit oh, tetchy is, is this okay am I allowed to be doing this you know um it's it's really really important for our souls because we're innately creative and if we're trying to funnel this all the time into productivity it's like we're turning ourselves into robots isn't it a thought that has been with me for the last I'd say at least a month, maybe longer, has just been the fact that coming to terms with the fact that personally and from what I see, if I can only speak for myself, I'm addicted to doing. Mm -hmm. I am addicted to doing. Mm -hmm. And so even when you say, oh, I'm so busy and I need a break, mm -hmm. you might get a break and within five minutes you're like, well, I need to fill this time with something. Yeah. And I must be doing something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it is... A struggle to kind of sometimes just sit and be okay with not doing anything and actually the time we're in at the moment where in the UK we're in the third lockdown and there's sometimes when my, my brain is just saying I can't concentrate on anything so I'm like oh this is a great time for me to like read and like I'm going to read all these magazines and do this and to me that that's downtime but even in that my brain is like no, we, it's we still don't a, have the capacity for this today, please. <laughs> it's still a disguise too, though. You know, it's not rest. It's still something else, which has its place. It's just, it let's just name it. It's not rest. It's just doing something else, which, you know, it's fine. Rest is a different thing. And, um, yeah, it's, and it's difficult. You know, when we, we are in lockdown number three, this situation has come from become from being acute to chronic now. So we're yeah. holding all of the stuff that we've already had to hold and deal with. We're on high alert all the time for every single next change that's coming and how are we going to 
adapt to it. We know that we're incredibly adaptable because we've had the experience. So that doesn't mean that our nervous system knows that yet. It's still responding in fight or fright. So we're often in producing cortisol. We're often doing this. So what we need to do to counteract that much higher level that we're in and have been in for a long time. So when you are having this in for a long time, it starts to become your normal and you don't mm. realize what it's like to not be in that because we've been it for so long. When we come yeah. away, if we, not if we come away, when we come away, yeah. but if we, get a, if we had an opportunity to all of a sudden stop being in this situation and realize what it's like to not be in the situation, the, the, then we would be able to see the huge gap between what it's like to be here and what it's like to actually be relaxed. I don't think we know that. So it really is part of our responsibility to more, I feel, more consciously step into the self-awareness. What do I need to really wind back my nervous system? What do I need to really relax? And um, if we were lucky, that would naturally come into our life um, in the ebbs and flows of what we used to do. But I think now we, need, we, we really must be so that this doesn't settle into us permanently, so that this small but reoccurring trauma that we're all going through right now, and that's in the, when we're li living in the best possible scenario of what we're going through. I'm not even referring to all of the grief and the loss and every, all of the fear and horrible situations that are around us at the moment but we need to be really taking a long-term look at how we're going to look after ourselves and consciously bring it in is is what i was going to say um mm -hmm. um sophia says i love to read and found it difficult to do in lockdown i'm finding it so difficult to get through each day because it's difficult to get through each day yes. yeah and acknowledge that it's, it's not something really we're doing is. wrong in no that. <laughs> it, it, it is. And when we can't read, which is a relaxing activity, we know that we need to, that we are in tough times. And that's yeah. not a choice we're making. That's not a failing that we have. It no. is, as you say, for you, reading is, you can't focus on it at times and it's not the thing to do. We need to be taking care. So what would you do in that situation then? Um, sometimes I just accept it for what it, it is. Um, and I don't try and force it. My, I, I think the thing I'm coming to in like whatever this chapter of my life is called is um, less force and more ease. And so if that means I do, I try to do things and run with my energy. I know I'm like a morning person, but even in that, um, for the last couple of weeks, um, I've exper experienced furlough for the first time, which is new for me because I still think I had a semblance of, oh, I have a structure to my week and I do, mm -hmm. and this is what I do. And then I do, you know, and now I'm like, oh, okay, I've got all of these hours. Now what? <laughs> um and so me being a morning person, I'm now finding myself getting up a bit later and I'm like, is this okay? Yes, it's okay. Because if you need the rest, then, then, then that's what it is. Um, I'll do things like when I know, I've, when I feel like I've got the energy, I will batch cook meals to make sure that in the times when I don't have the energy, I'm not just reaching for like tortilla chips for dinner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just try and go with the thing that, gives me ease and I also don't I'm trying not to run away from my feelings sometimes it's not about making yourself feel better or making yourself feel happy sometimes it's just accepting that this is the feeling and I just have to kind of ride it through it will pass mm -hmm. it will pass mm. and 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 actually I think a key part of it is not allowing yourself to distract yourself because that's what a lot of us have been doing for like for so long and it's it it's hard it's deep mm -hmm. it's tricky but sometimes it's like just let your body do what it needs to do and then you can carry on mm, lots of love mm -hmm. lots of love that pp ali says yes it's okay 
um, referring to, to yeah, stopping and feeling into the feelings, and we can be un we can be unsure of them um, because we're not used to it. That's all. Yeah. It's not because they're wrong. It's because we've yeah. been told to push them away, pull it, <sighs> stiff up a lip, get on with it, and all the rest yep. of it. And we've been told that by people who had to do that. Right, they, that was the only way they knew how. Now there are more skills available to us. There's more um, information about our brain and how it works. There's more evidence, there's more science, there's more, all of the rest of it. So we have more choices now and we can feel into it. And if it feels really unsafe, who can we talk to? What help can we get to sit with us? Who can we sit with us while we feel these feelings? How can you sit with them for... Uh, five seconds and then move on and how mm -hmm. can you then sit with them for six seconds and then mm -hmm. you know it's just none of us are good at it if we haven't done it this is not yes. some people yes. are good and some people aren't it's simply practice it's not a skill like dealing with with the response to all of this is not a skill that you either have or you don't have mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it's not something that you you can ach achieve and come top at the class of mm -hmm. like this is a new lesson for all of us. Yeah. I think one thing that I've put in place that I found has really helped me um, is fi finding a, a trusted buddy who um, will send each other these, these, like a WhatsApp message or something, and we will caveat it, NRR, which is no reply required. Oh, I love that. And then you just get, whether it's a voice note or whatever, yes. and you just get what you need to get off of your chest, because sometimes you don't even need a response. Yeah, you yeah. You just need an outlet. You just need an outlet. Yeah. You just need an outlet. It's, um, again, I mentioned my creative conversations for women is exactly that. It's not. It's not about fixing. It's not about solving it for anybody it's simply about holding space and the power of that i've been running and participating in women's red tent groups for five years so um and that's even more stricter than my creative conversations about um about being just holding space just yeah. holding space i and really didn't realize not the value the oh value gosh. of of like the, the, like i Sometimes I get a bit funny with like phrases that I feel can become a bit cliched and I'm like, everybody's holding space. What does it even mean? Yeah. And then I went to like one of my first um, journaling circles um, and then, my goodness, there is, there is power. There is such mm. power in like making a container of space for yourself and Turning your intention into action and yes. showing up for yourself, yes. whatever comes up there. And also, well, the practice we were doing, it was journaling. But in doing something, it's a solo activity, but doing it in community and yes. just knowing that that's what everybody else is doing yes. and has made time for. My goodness, it, it just, it completely blew my mind. Yes, <laughs> yes it has. It's, it's healed my heart over these five years in a way that... So much more has enhanced that, but it's that's that's the thing. That's the thing that's healed my heart. I am witnessed. I witness. Mm. I am with people who, in those times, are asking nothing of me, and yet I'm still worthy. Like, didn't know those two things went together. I <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> and um, and I can let go of my judgment. Oh my gosh, my judgment is such a weight to bear. I mean, yeah, I hear you about the cliches of these words and even judgment and weight to bear and space holding and safe containers and all the rest of it. This is, our language is inadequate for the feeling and the experience of doing that. It's really, really inadequate. And let's be okay with that and just let ourselves have the experience then. And we don't need to prove it to anybody else. We can just let it be there. Um, I loved what you said about the accountability for ourselves. Welcome, everybody who's joining, by the way. Um, the accountability that we have for ourselves for bringing, okay, we, 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 we carve out the time for that mm -hmm. space to be in there, and then we turn up, yeah, mm -hmm. and then we participate. All of these yeah. are, are, are doors that I have to go through to, to get into there. And yeah. then that allows the feedback to come in. It's like, 
oh, there's no right or wrong here and there's no rules. Oh, okay, I can just be. Oh, I can just be. And look, I'm being and it's okay. And, you know, the feedback is there. And then you finish and you've taken away that experience and that inner part of you that yeah. didn't know whether they could do that or not are going, ah, oh, that was okay. All right, we can show up for you next time you need to do that. And then, yeah. you know, you're bringing yourself along to to places like this, which is really, you know, really important to me and a wonderful experience that, mm. that I've had in doing that. Um, wow, that was like half an hour gone in a minute. So creativity for wellness, I we have touched on it all the, all the way through, but was there anything else that you wanted to say about that, how creativity supports you? A particular, my, my specific brand, I guess, of creativity, um, I think is writing, but I think you can find creativity ev everywhere. I find creativity when I deviate from recipes and I'm cooking meals, like it's my twist on something, you know. Um, but I am just allowing it to be what it needs to be. It doesn't need to be for purpose, for result. It doesn't need to be for anybody else's eyes apart from mine. And I've found that that is how creativity has supported me by not having too much expectation of it, just making space for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, in it making space, in me making space for it, it has made space and then some for me. And then um, some. That's the mm -hmm. point. You only have to give it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Going right back to what you said, that mm -hmm. Nicola Ray Wickham said about your voice, your mm -hmm. voice will learn, you know, what was it you said? You, you'll... Um, you find your voice by using it. You find your voice by using it. You find mm. your creativity by using it. And then some. You only have to use a little bit and it'll yes. go, oh, yay, yes. we're going to get to come out now. Come on, let's go. I've got you. And it's, yes. it's phenomenal, you know, the support that, that we, because it's life wanting to experience itself. It's life wanting to experience itself. And it's and our it's wholeness. Yes, yes, because we think that often, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm just like writing, you know, just, just writing something down, like, just, yeah, put it on Instagram, whatever. And people will like reply to me. And I don't think we realize that when we let ourselves be creative, whatever that looks like, whether that's how you put your outfit together that day, um, whether it's journaling, whether it's um, writing a song, I don't know. Creativity looks like all sorts. It could yeah, be yoga. Yes, it, yeah. could, it could be whatever. But we really need to realise how important it is because so many parts of you, other parts of you, can be unlocked, unleashed, revealed in that. Mm, yes. Just in writing down like 10 words a day, mm. it, it, can, it can show you so much about your character. And so what I'm trying to say is, it's not just about the thing. It's yeah. not just about the art journaling or the writing or the practice. There's so much more to it. So I implore anybody that comes across this just to make way for it because honestly, you do not know what is on the other side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and what we're saying here is that that is part of everybody too. It's not mm -hmm. some people are creative and some not. Like Emma Fashion Craver says, um, totally for yourself and no one else. Sophia's writing soothes her soul and gets things out of her head, right? And PP Ali says, oh, yeah, this is everything. It is everything to me. So I'm really glad you agree because <laughs> you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah. It's just about not minimising it. And I think it's, again, this whole thing of productivity and is it bringing a result? And then that means that we minimise it because we think it doesn't have value. That's right. All I'm going to say is whatever that thing is, like that itch, start it. Yes. And then in about six months' time, tell me what the Just value watch. is. Just watch. Exactly. <laughs> Come back to me and tell me how unproductive that was. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this, it's so beautiful. I mean, my word of the year is surrender. And that is because I have been a self-development and learning junkie, like you said, picking up things for learning. And so when you're saying about having space for not learning, that's mm. where I feel like I'm putting my energy this week and less force and more this year, this year. 
<laughs> Less force really? and more ease and the cycle yeah. of living with our own energy. All of these wonderful things that you've said today is all a part of this. It's all a part of creativity. It's all supported by um, help to understand. Nicola, even the mistakes have value in my opinion. I totally agree. This idea that we have that mistakes are wrong do not allow for the process of life it's denying the process of life when we yeah. think that mistakes are wrong i mean it's incredible as you would say sasha do the ting do the ting that's what that's my dad's influence there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah absolutely it's what he says the life lesson yeah oh absolutely and um is there anything that gets in the way of creativity for you um, I would probably say myself mm -hmm. um, and the whole. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> the self, the self doubt piece. I, I, I literally scribbled something down on the on a word block the other day, and I was like, "What?" I'm get, I might have to go and get it. it um, I said something like, "What have you decided not to do based on the outcome? Like that you've already decided in your head is how oh, it's going to turn out." Hello. <laughs> oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's, honestly, it's, all, it's always just, just trying to get past myself. On the imagined outcome too, right? That's the point. <laughs> it's the imagined outcome. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And so what, if that gets in the way, what do you do? do you, write, you write it down, right? Or what do you yeah. do? Do you shake um, your body? Do you go out for a walk? Do you something? You step away? Uh, what has this become my thing of choice has been... Um, giving the concert to no one in there's no one here, yep. but nobody asked for it. But giving them the concert that they didn't know that they asked for, it could be like a three minute Adele piece. It could be some sort of choreography that would like make Little Mix look like amateurs. Yes. <laughs> um, but also, so yeah. So sometimes it's about physical because sometimes for me it's about getting out of my head and into my body. Yeah. So um, it could be. Singing with reckless abandon for three minutes, dancing, uh, yoga. I've got a Peloton bike that I absolutely love. So sometimes yes. it's getting on my bike. Um, sometimes it is just writing. I've started doing morning pages and I found that they're really useful. Anything that just, I think, largely takes me away from a screen. Yes. Um, so I'm a fan as well of um, when I do read, reading um, like hardbacks or paperbacks rather than things on like a screen. Um, and yeah, I, I find that that's what helps. And actually the biggest thing that I'm learning more and more and more every single day is grace and compassion. Mm -hmm. Grace and compassion. Grace you, can't and expect, compassion. you can't expect the same thing from yourself every day. It is not possible every single day, even though we go through like, you know, the menstruation cycles and lunar cycles and whatever else. And like the the years and the months, the months come round every twelve months. Nothing is ever the same. No Never. day is the same. No. So you constantly have to ask, what have I? Okay, what do I have to give today? Like, what's what can I do today? And and go with that. And I don't think it's a cop out. It just it's just meeting yourself where you are. Oh, it's a stepping in. It's stepping mm. in. It's stepping mm. into what we have been taught through and just just realization is humans are meant to be you know it's over it's overcoming those ideas of we should be a ro robot and just because some people are and have less cyclical influences on them doesn't mean that we all need to follow that way mm -hmm. um nicola's like yes um just jeans is all the yes for the concert for nobody who asked for. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and Nicholas, gardening and embroidery are great to keep you in the present. Oh, and yes, gardening, connection with the natural world. Mm -hmm. Pop my crowns. You know, our soil, the soil, the earth is always holding us. It's always underneath us, a physical connection in there. And the uh, embroidery, because it's so minute, it's so and it's minute. A craft, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's, I love it. You know, that. and when we are doing seemingly um, unurgent tasks, our nervous systems know that we're safe. So it's like this is not this is not a high priority thing we need to do. So we are safe. 
Sophia, self-compassion. Sophia knows that self-compassion is a super as a superpower is my mantra Mm -hmm. you know like go get you much further if you want to think about productivity and you need to step from one place to another because we can't just go i'm productive i'm relaxed you know we need to ease ourselves into the (laughs) idea if you need permission to go from to move in that direction Mm self-compassion is a superpower because willpower will only take you as long as you have got that intrinsic need okay and that um will not last as long as when i'm coming from myself when i'm coming from what can i do here when you're coming from inspiration when you're coming from spark that will take you much further and much longer and much more rewarding and so then you will come back and do it again you know Mm. because we're coming from where we're resource we know what our resource is we're not trying to fake our resource we're not trying to impose false resources on ourselves and drink from an empty cup you know yeah it's 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 going to take us much much further i saw you get excited about that what do you think it's a beautiful reframe um i'm realizing that even though i'm actively trying not to think about um productivity and doing if i want more from myself the way that the door to that is self-compassion Mm. And honestly, if you had told me of like 10, 15 years ago that I'd have been like, what are you talking about? No, the way to get more to yourself is to plan and to this and to make routine. And, and, you know, these things, they do have their place. But also you have to ask yourself, you know, what do, what can I give today? What What am I I here for today? today? Yeah. Mm. What is asked of me today? What am I, you know, patience um, says sometimes we need to surrender. Sometimes sometimes patience come on all the time in one way or another it can be surrendering to busyness it can be yeah. surrendering to yeah. doing because yeah. my energy is high today i'm gonna bulk yeah. cook like you said the meals yeah. for when mm-hmm. i'm so have them ready so that when i don't have the energy i'm not digging into the t- tortilla trips or whatever as you said yeah. um You know, it is. It's surrendering into the moment. What is this moment asking of me now? What have I got to give to this moment? They they are all words that I have heard all of my life. And Mm. the self-compassion part of that is taste it. Taste it and see. Try a little bit. And the thing that gets me going is experience. I'm quite mm. stubborn and pig-headed and, and can stay in a direction and I'm quite loyal so I can stay things, mm. you know, very, very, very strong. But um, if I get the experience of something working for me, that will turn me much faster than you should. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so experience it, taste it little by little. Tamu Thomas uh, of the 360 says, one degree every day brings mm-hmm. you full circle in a whole year. You know, okay. like this is nothing. And when you mm-hmm. think of hidden figures and then calculate this, another of her um, analogies, mm-hmm. when you think of hidden figures and the calculations that they were doing to make sure that re-entry was exactly where it needed to be mm-hmm. to get the space capsule back down to Earth safety, safely, they were like hundreds and thousands of degrees would make all the difference to life and death. You know, yeah. like literally... And so we can do that with ourselves, just a little taste, just a little experiment, just a little, okay, I'm holding, um, judge, uh, with, you know, I'm suspending judgment for three seconds. <laughs> what does it bring up for me? And so it's it's all in, the, it's all in the, the little things. I think so often we think it has to be all or nothing. You have to be on for how many hours and then you can rest. Or, and it's like, no, um, I even saw a comment before where someone had picked up um, – um, something I wrote months ago and I was actually going to put it back up again um, about asking yourself what your capacity is each day. Yes. Asking yourself what your capacity is doesn't necessarily mean that you do nothing. Mm. Maybe it just means that you do the one degree instead of the 10 you were planning. Yes. You know? yes. But that's still something and it still moves you forward. Yeah, and it still honours you and it still mm-hmm. means that you are building trust with yourself so that when... Mm-hmm you need to push a little bit harder. You can say, I know that we don't have great capacity today, but I really do need to do this. So let's do this. And then tomorrow we can have a hug and sit down and snuggle on the sofa just quietly. And then 
when we do do that and do snuggle and sit on the sofa with ourselves just quietly, we can trust that next time we ask that of ourselves, we will be more willing. Treat ourselves like a different person that we're having a relationship with and respect and honour and, you know, oh, we could go on. Anyway, Sophia says today her self-compassion was going out for a walk, which is beautiful, especially now. Banana Stamper is the quote that you were saying. I love how you say, Sasha, what do I have the capacity for today? So, so Mm. important. Patience is agreeing. That's true. And Banana Stamper says... For a while now, I've been practicing asking myself, what do I need right now? What does my body need? And I love adding, what do I have the capacity for? Great analogy, says Natalie. Look, we are, we are well over time, but I know that we could go on and on and on. It's been beautiful. <laughs> it's People been lovely. <laughs> who have joined us will be able to find this on ITTV. Sasha, I'm going to make a report. Uh, individual recording of it so that it's fully accessible for you um, outside of Instagram as well Mm -hmm. and uh, where can we find you? Oh well you can find me um, on Instagram at Frank and Feel Um, at the moment you can also click through there to sign up for my newsletter Um, and today I've put on my stories that um I, I got the, 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 two AM, the 2 a.m the 2 a.m creative birth and I was like right I'm doing these things <laughs> so yeah I have a few other things that are in the offing I'm working on um my website and um an online journaling space like a monthly thing and also a podcast so there'll be some new ways to find me for everything and you just said it all out loud so there we go you heard it here guys <laughs> thank you right, Nicola, for being here thank you banana stamper it was a lovely way to begin your day i agree this has been beautiful thank you um and then i will be back next week with the amazing her- her- outrageously funny and but beaut- and beautiful sarita of horace hey sarita um and i mean this month's lineup is just so exciting so this is going on my igtv um sasha thank you i don't it doesn't matter that everybody else is watching it was lovely to just talk to you thank you so much for thank you for being the here and um, we'll see you around thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye everybody thanks